Good day, Deep and Word family. Welcome to day 193 of our Bible study review. Today, we're going through the book of Haggai, and it's just two chapters. The book of Haggai is a contemporary with the book of Zechariah. This is during the time of the post-exilic era. So the Jews made their way back home from the Babylonian exile. Now there's more details about this in the book of Ezra and Nehemiah, but this is the prophet concerning those who returned back. So let's open up and see what he has to say to this generation coming back from their exile. Right here, chapter 1, verse 1. In the second year of King Darius, now some people say Darius, but it says, In the sixth month, on the first day of the month, the word of Yahweh came by Haggai the prophet to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest saying, thus says Yahuwah of hosts, these people say the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of Yahuwah. Then the word of Yahuwah came to Haggai, the prophet saying, is it time for yourselves to live in paneled houses while the house of Yah lies in ruins? So Haggai is a prophet sent by Yahuwah to stir up the people to build up the house of Yah. And he's going to use the governor Zerubbabel, who is a descendant of King David, and the high priest Joshua to do it. Now, Yahuwah is searching the hearts of the people, and he's seeing how they are building up their own personal houses while having no desire whatsoever to build up the house of Yah. Do you remember when David felt terrible about him sitting in this lovely, beautiful home, but the Ark of the Covenant was in a tent, and he felt horrible about that. He wanted to build up a house, a concrete house, a respectable home for Yah. But the exile generation doesn't have much motivation and Yahuwah is going to kick them in gear. Let's pick up in verse 5. Now therefore, thus says Yahuwah of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much and have harvested little. You eat, but you do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put them in a bag with holes. Verse 7. Thus says Yahuwah of hosts, consider your ways, go up to the mountain and bring wood and rebuild my house, that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says Yahuwah. You looked for much and it came to little, and when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why, says Yahuwah of hosts, because of my house that lies in ruin, while each of you runs to his own house. Verse 10, therefore the heavens above you have withheld the dew, and the earth has withheld its crops. I called for a drought on the land of the mountains, on the grain, on the new wine, on the oil, on what the ground brings forth, on men, on livestock, and on all of the labor of your hands. Yahuwah says, since you have put a stop to building my house, to kingdom matters, he says, I have put a stop to all of your necessities. Yahuwah is basically saying, I'm going to make you pay attention to what's more important here. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 tells us to seek the kingdom first and all else will be added unto us. There are too many who are concerned with building up riches and treasures here upon the earth on this side that have absolutely nothing to do with eternal kingdom matters, right? And Yahuwah will shake them up too, because if they're not seeking him, they have idols. They are breaking the commands. They are breaking covenant. If we truly love him with all of our heart, our soul, and our strength, and we love our neighbor as ourself, then we are doing the king's business. We are doing kingdom business. We are advancing his house above our own house. If it's not of his kingdom, and if it comes from this Babylonian system, it's going to crash down, it's going to burn, and it's not going to transfer over into the millennial reign, into New Jerusalem. Many people will be saved by the hairs of their chinny chin chin, but they won't have any talents, anything that transfers over to show that they have truly been transformed, that they truly love the king, that they truly seek him first and his matters first. He is looking for hearts who are looking for his heart. All right, let's get back to it and pick up in verse 12. It says, Zerubbabel and Joshua, the high priest, with all of the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of Yahuwah, their Elohim. And the words of Haggai, the prophet, as Yahuwah, their Elohim, had sent him. And the people feared or revered Yahuwah. Then Haggai, the messenger of Yahuwah, spoke the message of Yahuwah to the people, saying, 
I am with you, says Yahuwah. And Yahuwah stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all of the remnant of the people. And they came and they worked on the house of Yahuwah, of hosts, their Elohim. And they started to do this work on the 24th day of the sixth month in the second year of King Darius. You see, this is the picture that the father wants to paint for us. He wants us to be involved in rebuilding up the kingdom, right? It takes an effort on our part as well. Now, he has done the work as far as bringing the spirit and changing our hearts over to love his words. And he has given us all gifts and he's stirring up those gifts and he wants us to spiritually build up this house and make the house ready for the king to come. Now let's walk into chapter two and we see that one month later, the word of Yahuwah comes to Haggai, the prophet again, and he wants to stir up the people once again. So he says, hey, speak to the governor, speak to Zerubbabel, speak to Joshua, the high priest, and speak to the remnant who has returned. It's always about the remnant, all right? Keep that in mind. And he's saying, who among you has seen the former glory of the last house? the one that King Solomon built. And this is what he asked. How do you see it now? Is it not on your eyes as nothing in comparison? Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, says Yahuwah, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Be strong, all of you people of the land, says Yahuwah. Work, for I am with you, says Yahuwah of hosts. See how he's not just going to do it all. He wants us to get involved and he wants us to build his house. And he says, according to the covenant that I made with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains among you now. Do not fear. So they're seeing these humble beginnings of this new temple and they're remembering the temple that King Solomon built, right? At least the older generation that has still survived throughout the Babylonian exile, which we know was 70 years. So there are some of the elderly who came back and they're looking at this new temple and they're like, this ain't what it used to be. And he's saying, do not despise these humble beginnings. He says, I am with you to strengthen you, to encourage you to build this together. Verse six, let's read it. For thus says Yahuwah of hosts, once more in a little while, I will shake the heavens and the earth the sea and the dry land. And I will shake all of the nations and they will come with the wealth of the nations. And I will fill this house with glory, says Yahuwah of hosts. So he's definitely talking about the time of Armageddon before we walk into the millennial reign. He says, once again, I'm going to shake everything from all of the nations, everything that they have taken that belongs to me. He says, I'm going to shake it out of their pockets. And I am going to make sure that this temple is built up beautifully from it. Verse 8, he says, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, says Yahuwah of hosts. The glory of this latter house will be greater than the former, says Yahuwah of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace, says Yahuwah of hosts. Now place yourself in their shoes. They have heard all of these prophecies from Isaiah, from Jeremiah, about the kingdom being restored. So they're expecting this millennial kingdom to come in their day right and the message is it's dependent upon you being faithful to the covenant because if you fall away to that idolatry and that lawless behavior this thing will not be restored this is fully dependent on your obedience but this is definitely pointing to the future but he's still leading his people to follow in his instructions and he is promising he is pointing to the time of all things being reconciled back to this glorious kingdom this unified kingdom let's pick up in verse 10 on the 24th day of the ninth month in the second year of darius the word of yahuwah came by haggai the prophet saying thus says the lord of hosts or thus says yahuwah sabuot now ask the priest concerning the law saying if a man carries holy meat in the fold of his garment and touches with the fold bread or stew or wine or oil or any food will it become holy and the priest says no then Haggai said, if one who is unclean by contact with a dead body touches any of these, will it become unclean? The priest answered, it will become unclean. Then Haggai said, so it is with this people and so it is with this nation before me, says Yahuwah. And so with every work of their hands and what they offer there is unclean. 
Yahuwah is basically saying these people have not purified their hearts to serve me. So any work that they do with the work of their hands is unclean because their motive, their heart isn't in the right place. Verse 15, now consider from this day onward, from before stone was laid upon stone in the temple of Yahuwah. So he's talking about when the foundation is being set, right? The humble beginnings, which is why they're not so motivated. They're not seeing the vision of the temple being built up to this glorious time again. And he says, from those days when one came to a heap of 20 measures, but there were only 10. And when one came to the wine vat to draw 50 measures, but there were only 20. He says, it looks like there's lack at this moment in time. But he says here in verse 18, consider from this day onward, from the 24th day of the ninth month, from the day when the foundation of the temple of Yahuwah was laid. Consider, is the seed yet in the barn? As of yet, the vine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, and the olive tree have yielded nothing. But from this day on, I will bless you. He's saying there's not much in this moment, but from this day forward, because you have built the foundation of the house, he says, now I will bless you. Remember back in chapter one, when they were building their own houses, but they weren't concerned with building up the house of Yah. And he says, look, you have sown seed, but nothing has come up. He goes, you save money to put it in your pocket, but your pocket has holes. He says, the reason why you're not prospering is because you're not seeking me first. But now that you have laid the foundation for my house, he says, now I will bless you. And honestly, we need to see the spiritual message in this right now because Yahuwah's house is first built up spiritually. And we know that when Peter made the confession that Yeshua is the son of the living God, that he is the Christ, he is the anointed one, he is the Messiah, our Messiah came back and said to him, upon this, I will build my church, my body, my ecclesia. That's a picture of the foundation being laid. He is the rock of the house. He is the rock of salvation. We are the temples that house, that hold the Holy Spirit. And that was only made possible by confessing Jesus, Yeshua, as Lord and Savior. Then, right, the Spirit of the Father came to take up residence on the inside of us. And now we are little stones in the spirit realm, right? Building up his house. And as we build up his house, as we share the gospel, as we make more disciples, guess what? We're making ourselves ready for the arrival of the king. Now there will be a physical temple that our Messiah sits in, in the millennial reign, but understand we are his house. We are his body. It has always been the desire for the Father to live and dwell among us. And our Messiah is doing a work, right? And when he comes, he is going to consecrate his priesthood even further to make us ready, to make us a perfect sacrifice to offer us back to the Father. Let's finish up the chapter. It says, the word of Yahuwah came a second time to Haggai on the 24th day of the month. So Haggai is receiving a word twice and one day, and it says, speak to Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth. I will overthrow the throne of the kingdoms. I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the nations. I will overthrow the chariots of their leaders. The horses and the riders will come down, everyone by the sword of his brother. On that day, says Yahuwah of hosts, I will take you, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shealtiel, says Yahuwah, and I will make you like the signet ring, for I have chosen you, says Yahuwah of hosts. So Yahuwah is promising Zerubbabel, who is the governor over this kingdom at this moment in time, and he's saying, I will make you a signet ring. Again, he is a descendant of King David. So he is a picture of the one who would hold the promises for the messianic kingdom to come. Zerubbabel is a picture of Messiah in this story. As we know, when our Messiah comes, it says that the government will be on his shoulders. Well, Zerubbabel is the governor over the kingdom of Judah at this time. And he's saying, I'm going to hold you, but he's promising him in a future time, but he doesn't set the date because Yahuwah never sets a date. He gives us a promise and he expects us to be faithful, to wait, to hold fast to our faith and wait for his promises to pass. 
And much like Zerubbabel, Yahuwah has chosen you, right? He has placed his seal upon you by way of his son and those who are making themselves ready for the king to return. Those who are building up the spiritual house by the time the last one comes in and he knows who that last soul is. It's at that point when our king will return to set up and restore this kingdom. Just like Haggai, I am here to stir up your spirit to tell you to encourage yourself in the word of of Yah and build his house. The foundation is already laid. The foundation is the rock of salvation. It is Messiah Yeshua HaMashiach. And now we need to build his house with precious souls. Share your testimony and share the word of Yah that he may be well pleased with you, that he may bless every work of your hands. Deep and word family, that's all that I have for you today. Until tomorrow, Yah bless.